So Room 101. Yes. As far as I know, that originally comes from a book called 1984 by George Orwell, I believe. Yes, yeah. Um, And then it was made into a TV show, and it's a room where you can basically banish things from the world so that they're no longer in existence. Oh. And it can be people, places, animals, (gasps) types of people, anything at all. You can banish it from the world. But in order to do that, you've got to convince the other person why you want to get rid of it and why the whole world should get rid of it. Okay, okay, fair enough. And I've got five, Mm. plus I've also got a few sort of almosts. Okay. How many you got? Um, I have eight, but some of these uh, could probably be rolled into the same uh, category. Yeah. Um. Yeah, and a few of them are just as I've been out and about recently. I'm like, God, that's annoying. Yeah. <laughs> Getting on my list. And we decided before we did this that at least one of these would be a person. Yes, that's right. Is yours a celebrity? Yes, it is. Yes. So is mine. And yes. In the research for this one, um, yeah, I found the actual ten most hated celebs. All oh, right. And then I've got my own list of people that are hated, but I don't really know why. Oh, okay. Um, and then I've got this whole other list um, of celebrities who are famous for nothing. Hmm. That's really annoying. Famous. Yeah, okay. Okie doke. Do you want to start? I'm going to strangle you with your okie dokes. I know, it's where it all began, wasn't it? The very first word on the podcast. Episode. Yeah. Okie doke. Yeah. It's cool. And every time when I'm trying to find that new audio to edit, I hear that every time. Your annoying okie doke going in my room, going in room 101. <laughs> <laughs> I've got nine now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay, right. So, should I start off with one of my one of my items then? Yeah, go on. Hit me with something really hard, like a frying pan. I'd love to. I really would. No, okay, so... so one. What? Oh, shut up. Hit me one. <laughs> uh, so, um, I'm going to start off quite lightly, I think. I'm going to go into my, my more annoying things um, as the episode progresses. So, this is something that annoys me. You know, it's quite quite a lot. You know when you're on a bus yep. and you're, you know, you get on, you've got bags and they're all you know, weighing you down and then there's some fucker, right? Sitting there on the seat, right on the outside seat, with their bag on the seat next to them. Yeah, that is annoying. Yeah, that's annoying. Yeah. I'm like, hello, can you see me with fucking bags? Oh, 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 you can. <laughs> that's fine. I'll just struggle past then. You know, <laughs> I hate that. I really, really hate that. It's so just rude. The thing that you're putting in is people that put their bags on their seats and taking up a seat. Uh, essentially, yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Like, I completely understand that, yeah. and it is annoying. Yeah, but I have done that in the past. I've got <gasps> a bag next to me to purposely stop people sitting next to me because it's weird. That I makes like you it. a bad person. I know I'm going to end up in the room on so many of these. I feel, yeah. but, the, but the thing is, like, yeah. I've got something sort of built in. I suppose it's just conscience, really. That you know, if you're sat on a bus and there's yeah. like five other people on this bus, yeah. Then I th- it doesn't matter, I think. You can just put your bag there. Oh, okay, I get you. So it's not like it's a packed bus and you're all taking up two seats. It's no. just that it's an empty bus. Yeah, and if the okay. bus does start to fill up, then I do put my bags on the floor between my legs. Okay. So I suppose that's, you know... I would never sort of... You know, I suppose the people that you're saying are the, the really annoying people that, you know, there's no seat apart from the one next to them and they've got their handbag on it. Yeah, yeah, that's annoying. Yeah, they can go in. Yeah, fuckers. Get them in. Get them in the room. All right, cool. All right, one of yours? Yeah, as you've had sort of like a type of person... Okay. I'll go for the same. Yeah. My one is people who love to spoil TV programmes, films, books... Oh. And obviously, you know, this is primarily goes to Game of Thrones Mm. because you had the whole battle between people that had read the books versus the people who haven't. And so many times, you know, it would get ruined because 
oh I've read the book so I know what's coming you know this is going <laughs> to happen and it would be so so annoying yeah. and this also comes into the bracket of like films and stuff and I remember working a night shift one night and I hadn't seen um, Spyfall the James Bond film oh right yeah and I've loved James Bond since I was like two years old so you know the new Bond film was a really exciting thing for me and I was waiting to see it this particular weekend this woman comes in and I said to her oh because she went to see it the night before and I said oh did you go and see it she went oh yeah it was really good and I said oh, oh brilliant and she went yeah I had no idea Miss Moneypenny would be in it oh and I went oh no no no, no don't tell me anything and she went oh so you don't know anything you don't know that uh, M dies at the end <laughs> I could have strangled her oh, with that's annoying. my bare hands. And you know what you did then, because yeah. I just said I've not seen it, and yet yeah. you still carried on. It's people like, you know, spoilers that happen by accident, you know, they can be forgiven. Like, I remember when Ted came around, like, on one of the very first nights that we ever met, like, mm. I think he'd been around two or three times. I was watching The Walking Dead, and he came in and sort of said, oh, you're watching The Walking Dead? And it just slipped out of his mouth and he saw Andrew on the screen and went, oh, she hasn't died yet. And it's like, oh, you <laughs> bastard. But I don't think he meant it. Like, he just went, yeah. oh, she's still in. Like, that I can maybe sort of get over. But going out of your way to spoil it for someone. Mm. Yeah, that's, need to talk. that's... That is annoying. I mean, yeah, especially if they come just out with it and there's no warning whatsoever. You see, you know I like a good spoiler. Yeah. and uh, I go out of my way to find the spoilers but I I try not to spoil things for people like yeah. once I found that stuff out I know I accidentally did for that, that film the other day with you <laughs> Kingsman yeah that was an interesting one for anyone that's not seen Kingsman just like fast forward by like oh. 30 seconds sat there chatting away and I said oh I really want to see Kingsman or whatever but no I didn't even say that I just said oh they're planning on making a second one yeah, that's and right. And I said, oh, apparently um, Colin Firth's not going to be in it. And you went, well, he couldn't be, he's dead. And I went, I've not seen the first one. And you was like, oh, sorry. Yeah, <laughs> but you see, that's not my fault. I mean, that the way, you, way you, you made that sound, it was like, well, for Colin Firth not could be in the second one. I thought, well, obviously not, he's dead. <laughs> Jeez, you know, it was it was your fault, really. And it would have been like me saying, oh, Kit Harrington ain't going to be in season six of Game of Thrones. <gasps> Spoiler! <laughs> oh no, not so really. No. Um, but I was going to say, Char, right? Is I think these people that like to spoil things and go out of their way to spoil things, is they like the power. Mm. They like that look of you know holding that thing over someone. Mm. I think that's that's yeah. People are yeah, people are sick. I mean, it's exciting to say to someone, "Oh, you won't believe what happens in this." But yeah you just got to fight it and the thing is especially with Game of Thrones I mean the whole book people that had read the books and then watched the TV show mm. they love to bloody spoil it for the people that hadn't read oh, the book oh yes they do definitely so you know given where we're at in the programme now I mean no one knows where it's coming from so I love the fact that there's yeah. people that, because of the time of day that the episode airs and things like that I love the fact that the people that haven't read the books can now get their own back to some degree because they might have seen the episode yeah and they that's true to someone oh I saw what happened and if they're a book person then they deserve all they get <laughs> yeah <laughs> that is funny so you're going to let you're going to let me put them people in um I, I might I'll allow it I think yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay right Go on, ready ready for another one yeah okay right well this one's going to be probably it's not going <laughs> to appeal to everybody but <laughs> Children. Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's a terrible term. You realise you're going to work out the future of the race. Yeah. No. You no. See, just, just don't get me wrong. You know, kids are they're cute and funny and whatever else, but it's when the parents let them just roam free. Oh my. Yeah. But you see, it's like my um, I was on train the other day, and this woman just let a kid he was walking up and down. He kept looking at me. I'm like, what do you want? Fuck off! I'm trying to listen to music. <laughs> Obviously, I didn't say that, but I was hoping yeah. my my look conveyed what I was thinking. But and she kept doing the whole like the kid was jumping on the chairs, and then the train obviously is coming to quite an abrupt stop. And I thought that kid's going to go flying in a minute, and yeah. I'm going to be the bad adult because I don't reach out and try and stop him falling. <laughs> Whereas her mother's prattling about doing something else, you know. Yeah. 
But, I mean, I had the exact same thing on the same day as you. I mean, yeah. it'd be interesting to see what your person looked like and what mine looked like. Yeah. Because it was, it was the same thing. I mean, I was on the train for an hour and 38 minutes, and for 40 of those minutes, yeah. this fucking idiot of a woman <laughs> kept running up and down the train, chasing her little git of a kid, <laughs> running after it, screaming the kid was literally to the point oh. I mean I was listening to headphones you know I was listening to Prince pretty loud yeah and yet I could still hear this kid screaming running up and down the mum is jumping on the chairs oh. going oh, sort of scaring the kid literally crawling under the table and oh, stuff like God. that and then I mean we say about the train coming to an abrupt stop it did come to an abrupt stop and the yeah. kid's face literally planted itself on the back of a chair Yes. And I was pretty happy, but at the same time, but like, look at these parents, and they look at you like you're the one in the wrong. Exactly, exactly. Um, this we're going to be one. the ones. But so someone's going to listen to this and think oh, we're monsters. But maybe I don't know. Maybe we would feel differently if we actually had children. We probably would do. But you know, you've got to be aware of your surroundings and the people that are sitting there have had a long day at work and just want to go home and relax you know yeah. I mean there's an element of common decency that has to come into it I remember being on a train a little while ago now it's probably about three or four months ago mm. and I was coming back from uh, London and it's, it's a fairly long train journey and there was this woman next to us like on the opposite table seats yeah and she was with this little girl and they were playing snap and every time it got to snap, the kid was screaming it. I mean, it wasn't just <sighs> loudly, you know, because I can take that. This was screaming it. The woman was egging it on. Oh, God. And they were throwing the cars at each other, mucking around. And I sort of, she looked around, and she, she knows what's happening. I gave her a bit of a look. Yeah. And she just completely gave me this dirty look back <laughs> and carried on. <laughs> another five minutes and then I actually sort of said to it excuse me do you mind just sort of keeping it down just a little bit only I'm really getting a headache now yeah. like, a bit of a joke out of it yeah she just looked at me gave me another dirty look as if to say you yeah, know like I'm going to listen to you and turned away yeah so you know the mum part of me took over you know? oh no <laughs> and I just went excuse me oh jeez <laughs> I don't know why you're giving me a dirty look but actually if you could keep your bastard child under control oh dude <laughs> so we won't be having this problem and she said like oh she's just a bloody child what's your big issue and I said my big issue is that I'm sat here I've had a long day in London you know been doing all sorts of things I'm knackered yep I just want to go home. I don't need to hear you playing Snap. Yeah. She's only five years old. I said, I don't care. You are older. You know what's right and wrong. Control your child. And my exact words came from an old um, Russell Howard thing because yeah. it just came into my head. So I just shouted at her um, until you can learn how to control what comes out of your fanny. Stop pushing them out. Because oh. it just really, really pissed me off. Oh, and dude. she would shut up and... Um, what I then did was probably a bit over the top because what did you I was do? Well, I was listening to music on yeah. where I, I had my headphones on, so I unplugged them and just turned my iPad up as loud as it would go. Oh, and it was just I, t I mean it was pathetic. It was stupid looking back. So I just played <laughs> that for the duration of the train journey. Unfortunately, it was the sort of popular hit at the time, Justin Bieber's. Um, What's it called? Oh, God, Where are you now? Poor people. <laughs> it, it's one of them really annoying songs that gets on your nerves. So I just kept repeating it every time it finished. And then when I got off the train, I just sort of shouted back, snap, and then got off. <laughs> I mean, it's oh. totally childish, but it's what they drag you to. In yeah, the, yeah. It's, it's not unless cool. you sat there, it's, it's so annoying. Yeah. So annoying. Yeah, it definitely is. <laughs> if, I, if I can alter... Yeah. What you're putting in room 101. <laughs> I'm not just going to put all children in. <laughs> yeah, no, that's, that's a bit harsh. Yeah, that's, that's, that's fair. Okay. Well, not, we don't and if I'm, if I'm completely children. honest, I don't think the fault lies with the children. No, no, it's the parents, isn't it? So I think we should put in parents that don't control their children. You know, and. It's not that. Mm, let's, let's be careful, because it's not the ones that are, you know completely stressed out and can see their kid is misbehaving have are trying their best but you know can't it's the ones that blatantly ignore it and egg it yeah. on that get yeah. on my nerves so how about we just put on the, just put in the ones that egg it on and make the situation even worse yeah yeah okay let's do that so we're not so just to clarify we're not putting in all children 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, no, no we're, we're, not, like, we're not monsters. <laughs> I like the fact that when I said to you, oh, let's do a Room 101 one, that'd be really cool, you know, we can put in all the things we hate and you just put, children. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know, it's bad, isn't it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> jokes, jokes, bro. All right, so, so far, we've got, um, I was going to say children then, we've got people who spoil stuff. Yeah. People who egg their children on. Yep. And what was your first one? Uh, bag people. <laughs> oh yeah, bag people. Hey, <laughs> there's a lot of train this going on, isn't there? Oh, maybe instead, maybe instead of room one hundred and one, we should just put the the adults with the unruly children next to people that won't move their bag and see how they get on. Yeah, that's, let's let's do that. Yeah. Fuckers. And then someone to just run through the train carriage screaming, "John Snow dies, but he comes back!" <laughs> oh, spoiler! Spoiler! Yeah, but by the time this one goes out, it's going to be That's true. weeks later, so he could be dead again by then. God, can you imagine? <gasps> Don't say that. That's Shall something you? George R R R R R R R Martin would do. He it? would do that, wouldn't he? Monster. Right. So, shall I give you my second one? Go on in. It's a bit of a weird one. Okay. Um, it's subscriptions to things when you've already bought the main product <laughs> yeah <laughs> like it really annoys me like for example World of Warcraft oh yeah I didn't see this coming <laughs> you spend you know upwards of like £10 for the base game yeah then you buy all the expansion packs yep then they have the cheat to say to you, oh, and by the way, you've got to pay us £10 a month to now play that. Yeah, yeah. So essentially, you know, like a little while ago, I didn't realise that as soon as I put in the first disc of World of Warcraft, the original Burning Crusade game, I didn't realise that that was automatically going to then install four expansion packs. So I bought all of those as well and then didn't need them. <laughs> so I was already pissed off. Yeah. And then, oh, by the way, you've got to spend another £10 so that you can actually play these games. Like, And I was really pissed off. And another thing that really winds me up is the fact that, you know, I've just bought an Xbox One. Mm. It was like 300 quid, including a game. And then I've got to sit there. I can't go on YouTube and other things like that because I've then got to pay another £40 oh, really? for a year subscription to be able to use all the features on it. Oh, that's not cool. Because otherwise, without an Xbox Live subscription, you mm. can literally just play your game and save it. That's it. You can't use any of the other features. Oh, that's bad, isn't it? So, yeah, like, anything like that, where you have, like, a paid subscription, when you've already... Like, I can understand it if it's a game online and, you know, you have to pay to play it. Fair enough. Mm. But if you've already actually spent money... And let's face it, World of Warcraft ain't cheap. Uh, no, it's not. It's not cheap. This is true. And I mean, if they have to, you know, keep charging you for it continuously, mm. then make it cheaper. Mm, yeah, okay. I don't know, I don't know about that one, whether I'm going to let you put it in there or not. Oh, mate. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Put it this way. Yeah. You've got World of Warcraft. I have. Because you've got me into it. Yeah. Have you ever gone to play the game? Yeah. Then realise that your subscription has expired and then thought, oh, fuck it, I'm not playing it. No. <laughs> it's just too easy to just get another subscription, though. So I just... Yeah, but £10, man. Yeah, it's £10, but I don't have a social life, so, you know, I've got to do something with my time. <laughs> True. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, I don't drink, I don't smoke, barely go out, so, yeah, what's 10 quid yeah. for a bit of entertainment? Yeah. People pay that to go to the cinema, you know, well, for one fucking ticket these days. Back yeah. in my day, it's a pain. <laughs> no but really. then you'll get... It was. You know, we used to get the pound no, cinema. They, they were good. I like that. How many times did we see Spider-Man 2? Seriously. I don't remember. Was it a lot then? Oh, we went every weekend. Every What should we go and see? Oh, oh, Jesus. Um, no wonder I hate that I, film now. <laughs> I understand it for stuff like Netflix. Mm. Because you're paying for that month to be able to watch films and TV shows because you've not bought anything to begin with to be able to watch that yeah so I can understand that but I think if you've already spent you know like 30 odd quid on a game and then they have the cheek to say to you oh spend another 30 quid to actually be able to play it I think they're having a laugh so yeah. <laughs> yeah so if I could put it to you yeah that instead of putting the whole thing in like mm. in terms of 
put in paid subscriptions when you've already bought something in. Yeah. Could I say put that in if they weren't willing to at least half the price of it? Um, I'll I'll allow that. I, I will allow that. And I want you to to bear in mind how nice I've been for when I give you <laughs> my next one. Okay. Right. Yo. Oh. <laughs> Are you ready for it? I think so. You're not going to like it. So, my next one is coffee shops. <laughs> right, well I can tell you already that I'm getting in. <laughs> but let me, let me clarify, I suppose. Pretentious coffee shops. So, I'm closer. <laughs> the ones that, oh. you know, when you go in, they know your name. And um, oh, yeah. <laughs> know your order, and the ones that, that they just sit there with their little tappy tap laptops, and you just go in there to do a bit of socialise and talk with your friends, or you know, bring your children in, stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> right, we'll clarify this to start with. <laughs> a little while ago, I'm sat in uh, Nero. Yeah, I love Nero. I think sure it's do. The best coffee shop. I put it up there above Starbucks and all of them. No, They're... Costa for me, mate. Do no love... way. <laughs> Free coffee. They're crap. Nero do two espressos. They do semi skim milk. You can't go wrong. Anyway, Look, this I'm is what I'm upstairs. talking about, people. Right, yeah, I'm sat upstairs, and then we've got one of these women with their unruly kids, and she decides to come in with a gaggle of little bastards. She decides to push tables together put them all round in a circle around this table there must have been about nine children and then a couple of her other friends come in and they decide to then have coffee with nine children running around the coffee shop oh my monsters <laughs> I think it's wrong to take your children to a coffee shop if they can't behave well that's, it's not what you said though was it I think my exact words were <laughs> these fucking kids <laughs> need to not be in the coffee shop yeah a coffee shop, especially this particular one, because it's the way that it's laid out and that, you know, your sort of communal area is downstairs. Upstairs, it's for people that are studying for university. They're on a break from work. It's a more relaxed vibe up there. You know, there's comfy chairs and things like that to chill. Oh, you don't need some woman coming in with her little frog children jumping all over the place. Um, didn't you, were your words, the, the correct words you used about, shouldn't she take them to McDonald's? I well, yes, yeah, because that's a place for children. Children can't drink coffee anyway. You wouldn't take children to a pub, so why are you taking them to a coffee shop? Because it's still oh, something... Oh, you can take children to a pub though, can't you? Yeah, but would you? Because then you would yeah. say, well, the people that are in the pub are, you know, a different kind of people anyway, because they could be drunk, they're drinking alcohol, it's not safe for the children. So why are you then allowing children to go somewhere which is not suitable for them in other ways? I don't... Well, let me let me ask you this. Do, uh, do Nero sell fruit shoots? No, they don't, actually. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm very sure. Are you? Yeah, they sell water and apple juice and all that kind of stuff, but they don't sell apple the children's juice. fruit shoot. Oh. Okay, okay. Um, that's an interesting question. Do Starbucks sell fruit shoots? Do they sell anything that's sort of targeted at children? I don't know. <laughs> I'm going to send you a photo tomorrow <laughs> of Nero's fridge <laughs> so you can have a look and oh. see if there's anything there targeted at children. Jeez. Yeah, well... Yeah, pretentious coffee shops is what right. I hate. In terms of you saying it's pretentious and the yeah. whole knowing your name and stuff, mm -hmm. when I go to that Nero, yeah. they don't know my name, but I know their names. You sure do. Because I've lived here for like four years. Well, uh, no, I've lived here for like six years now. Yeah. And I've been going to that coffee shop for about three years. Mm -hmm. It's been the same staff, you know, for the whole time. Yeah. And they get to know you and they get to know your order. We've recently had a new manager in this branch, oh. and I don't like her because she's really annoying. She always fucks up the order. It's an ice latte with a caramel shot. She always puts hazelnut in it. That fucks me off. Oh. And also, there's this other little trainee girl who's really annoying because um, she, well, she's just annoying and she always gets everything wrong. The manager, every time I have um, a speciality caramel latte, she always asks, would you like marshmallows on it? 
No, because I'm not a fucking four-year-old. Put caramel sauce on it and shut up. Wow. Wow. <laughs> but yeah, and when I go in there on an occasional thing, I know their name. I don't call them their name, but I know <laughs> them because I've heard them talk to each other before. Uh-huh. Yeah. Mm. It's unfortunate, actually, because um, a lot of the staff have been taken and given to another branch. Oh, no. Branch. It's really depressing to be yeah, honest. Yeah, definitely is, isn't it? It's not the same. I've even been starting to go to the other one. Um, oh, no. That's primarily because there's a really fit guy that works in that one, but that's just another reason. Yeah. But pretentious coffee shops. Yeah. Like, I don't see Nero as pretentious. Really? I see Starbucks as pretentious. Oh, no, I see Nero as it as well, especially that one in where the one you go to. It just It just oozes <laughs> from it. <laughs> <laughs> but as far as I know, do you know what? I don't think Nero actually even call it like Venti and Grande and all that. I find that pretentious. We're not in Italy. No, this you is You don't true. need to, you know, you don't go to Pizza Hut and say, oh, I don't want a pizza. You know, you don't do it. <laughs> no, so why you definitely don't, don't do that. <laughs> so why is it when you go to Starbucks, suddenly you get some twat come along in a suit, smelling of the latest fragrance and says, oh, I'll have a Grande Macchiato, please. Fuck off! Just say you want a large coffee. Yeah, that's no annoying. to speak like that. Yeah. So I get the whole pretentious thing because I think there is a lot of pretentiousness <laughs> <laughs> along with coffee and stuff because it's become something else now. Yes, like, it's it's like a symbol of of not status as such, but you know the the ones that go out of their way get a coffee in the morning. It's a little ritual for the an iced semi skimmed macchiato with. Bat droppings and God knows oh, what mate, else. That's so good. <laughs> Re- really, bat droppings. Strong with no, you. See, like, like yesterday. Yeah. We went London. Yeah. And I had my first cold brew. You did. It was nice. I loved it. It tasted sort of alcoholic, if I'm honest. If there's anyone out there thinking they're having their first cold brew, you know, it was very nice. Yeah. I went somewhere once, and it's this little place where people, you know. Out, put it this way outside they do river tours gives you an idea of how pompous it is yeah. and I went in there and I saw on the thing it said cold brew and I just read about it that you know it, if the coffee doesn't touch hot water so it basically sits and soaks in cold water until it is flavoury you know uh-huh. flavoury isn't a word but you get the idea yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll edit a word in there that means flavoury flavoury um, <laughs> flavoury and I said oh I'll have to cold brews please and he went yeah yeah no worries he went out the back came back with two glass bottles I mean they were tiny I mean they couldn't have even been the same amount as what the bottle of coke would be like you know a 500ml one this must have been about a 300ml bottle Mm. put it on the side and said that would be £12 please oh fucking hell and I said are you serious (laughs) yeah and I said it's I said it's just like coffee right and he went, yeah, twelve pound. It's cold brew. It's been sat out the back for six months, and then we popped it, and you know we made love to it, and all these things. Yeah, like, it, it's coffee. Yeah. That I see as pretentious. Yeah, yeah, that is. But I, I don't see Nero as pretentious at all. I see that as a place where you can go catch up with a mate. You know, they'll drink half of their coffee. Well, it's actually <laughs> that they'll scoop the cream off of the top of their coffee. They'll get that all over their face. They'll eat that. They'll leave the coffee, and then they'll leave. I mean, there's pretentious, and then it's just down my fucking rude, and so don't come at my coffee shops until you fucking drink the coffee. I really don't like it, though. Every time I go in there, and they make me a coffee, and I'm like, oh, it's nasty. But, yeah, I like the cream, though. <laughs> Sorry. And I don't like it, because he also, that, that bloke that works there, he, um, yes, I was being diplomatic but whatever Brooke I'm sure he's not listening <laughs> you don't know that hi Brooke <laughs> <laughs> he um yeah he commented on the fact that I didn't drink his coffee well I'm not surprised because if I made yep. you a coffee which I have done in the past yep. and then you didn't drink it yeah so the fuck's going on drink your coffee what well, would he like would he like me to tell him the truth that I didn't like it no he's well, that, that's say? not that's not customer service is it I mean, at the end of the day, he is there providing a service. I am the customer. You know, don't be a douche to me. <laughs> the customer's always right. If I'm not going to drink my coffee, I was obviously right about exactly. it. Exactly. I did not care for it. So, fuck you. 
I mean... And also, oh, also, <laughs> I would like to add, the people that can't seem to go five fucking minutes without wanting a coffee. Oh, should we, should we go for a coffee? No, James, I don't want another <laughs> coffee, okay? <laughs> Oh. He was at London for what? Seven hours? Roughly? Yeah. Yeah. And how many times did I say I want a coffee? Oh, at least, at least seven times, at yeah. least. And I swear to God, we left one place, and then you went, oh, I "Should go for a coffee?" And I actually believe I stopped, startled, and looked at you, <laughs> and like, seriously, really? Yeah, but it, it ain't enough. I mean, like, if that's this one This is why you have health got, problems, okay? If I've, got, if I've got one criticism for Nero, you need to make your takeaway cups just a little bit bigger because oh, an iced coffee, God. it just goes straight down so quick, you know, it barely touches the sides. And if I've been at work, you know, I usually work a shift from half past eight in the morning until half past two in the afternoon. I go straight, I'm in Nero, my ass is on a comfortable chair upstairs, not surrounded by children by oh, three o'clock. Jesus. And I'm drinking an iced latte with a caramel shot. And that, that shit's going to go down really quick because I haven't had any coffee by that point, you know, and it's half past two. Oh, heaven, heaven forbid. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so. So, yeah. Coffee shops. I mean, yeah. The coffee culture is what I, I'll call it. Coffee culture. Yeah. Having your coffee cup. What's your name, please? Uh, Jeff and Davina, obviously. Oh, yeah. See, I mean, if you put coffee culture in there, mm. then we would have made Jeff and Davina. Well, this is true, but was Jeff and Davina a creation of our of our childishness regarding the whole coffee culture? <laughs> so we've got what was the what was the flavour one I said? Flavourness. <sighs> so, like, in terms of the coffee, yeah. Um, I'm not just going to put coffee shops in there. Okay. Um, coffee culture. Yeah. I'm not putting that in there either. <laughs> like, excuse, excuse me. <laughs> I get what you're saying. I mean, yeah. I'll put pompous coffee shops, mm -hmm. but I don't think Nero is pompous. Um, <laughs> and really, Starbucks, Starbucks is pompous. Yes. Definitely, I'll give you that. I mean, it's overpriced. Yeah. Um. I mean, that's one of the things that I like about Nero is that it's a lot cheaper than anywhere else. Um, Starbucks is pompous, but I feel like it's it's a place to go and meet people. It's a place to catch up. It's a place to chill. It's a place to do your uni work or whatever. I also that's what also I don't like that it's people go there to do their uni work to study or whatever. It's a public place. You're gonna get interrupted. You know, why why not go to a library? Why not go somewhere quieter? Because then there's people like me a little while ago, when I first moved here, mm. I didn't have internet for a week. Yeah. So I needed somewhere to download Desperate Housewives. <laughs> so <laughs> I would go to Jesus. Starbucks, I'd sit, I'd have a coffee, I'd download, you know, a season of Desperate Housewives. I'd go back the next day and I'd download season two. <laughs> you know, I don't, I'm not going to do that in a library. No, no. I, I mean, that's fine. But it's the people that are there trying to study and trying to, you know, f focus and concentrate on something and keep getting interrupted by the the gaggle of children or whatever, and then get annoyed by it. Don't get, don't go there. Then it is a public place. Yeah, but then you've got to have a middle ground. I mean, a library is very, you know, complete silence. Yeah. Um you know, complete studying. Yeah. You know, you go to a coffee shop, you know, it doesn't need to be complete silence. You know, there can be background noise, but you just don't need a child banging its head on the table and then screaming five minutes later because you've pushed it over. It's just not me in a coffee shop. <sighs> well, the thing is, I, I knew I wasn't going to win this one. I just, I, I mean, had to put it in there. I was sat uh, a couple of days ago, um, with my husband and yeah. his brother and we're sat there and you know we were being fairly loud we were laughing we were talking about various things it was making us laugh we were in it loud and the woman next to us she got up and she moved <laughs> I realised what we'd done is wrong we all did really? we all sort of looked at each other oh yeah definitely like because I remember thinking oh, we were being a bit loud you know and I couldn't fault what she'd done you know I sort of felt bad and that's all I'm asking of these parents that take their children out to these places is to sort of be aware of what they're doing and not do it. 
Because this poor woman trying to sit there enjoying her macchiato. Yeah. And she's had to move. That poor woman, bless her. To be fair, she didn't move far, but it's not the point. She was just making a point. She weren't going anywhere. Yeah. She just wanted to make a point of, you're being rather loud and I've got to move. Oh, jeez. So, Mm, well, like I said, I didn't expect to get that in there, but, you know, well, I, I was I'll hoping. Put, I'll put pretentious coffee shops. I'll put overpriced. Um, like Starbucks, it's a chain, it's a company, you know. I'm not going to put the whole lot in there, but I will put the little coffee shops that charge you stupid money. I mean, I remember one day went in this one and I said, can I have this? I think it's called... It was a classic Italian or something. Mm. And I thought it would be just a proper coffee, but it was cold. And I said, yeah, yeah, I'll have one of those, because I thought it was a nice coffee. Um, when she gave it, it was literally one shot of coffee and three tablespoons of condensed milk. Oh. And that was it. <laughs> there was no ice. There was no extra milk. There was nothing. It was literally like a mouthful, and that was it. It was like a shot. Yeah. And they were £3.50 each. Oh, dear. That I find, you know, sort of pompous, really. Yeah. And you know, I'll put that in there. Okay. Okay. So you've got, you've got it in in a way, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's no way you're putting Nero and Brock in. Oh fuck's sake! <laughs> you're annoying. Go oh, on then. <clears throat> Your next one. Me next one, right? Um, it it sounds really simple. Um, flies. Right. Um, like, I no, I'm annoyed by flies. This this is fine. Okay, carry on. I see no good that comes from them. Right. They you know they feed from you know poo essentially. Yeah. They then fly in your house mm. and then they sit on your food and like if I see you know if I put a whole pizza on the side. Yeah. You know from pizza or whatever mm -hmm. and I sort of leave it for two minutes I come back if I see you know something fly off that yeah. I won't be able to eat it because no. I think I don't know where it's landed before that it could have anything on it I could be eating fragments of dog shit that's true that's very true they, they bring nothing to the world like you know so a lot of people say oh we'll get rid of spiders but they give a lot to the world and stuff you know mm. in the same respect flies don't they give nothing well I I, I don't know exactly what flies do and do not bring, but uh, yeah, no, they they are annoying. I I like I can't, I would love to be able to sit outside and like have picnic and all that sort of shit, but I can't because I hate the thought of flies <coughs> flying all over me dinner and oh no. Yeah, like yesterday when we went London. Yeah, we could have sat outside and ate, or we could have sat outside and had coffee. You can't eat outside in London because if you do, you'll just be swarmed with flies. That's true. Yeah, it's very annoying. And the only way, you know, especially at home, is where it really annoys me. You know, if I'm sort of sat there and I can see, you know, two or three flies mm. buzzing around the room, it winds me up, and I've got to kill them. <laughs> and you know, I'll open the window, I'll give them a head start, you know, be open for about 30 seconds, and if they don't get it, they are getting fucking sprayed. And I don't just spray the room, I spray the fly. Of course. Because that little shit is going down. <laughs> but, you know, fly spray, it is fucking horrible. Yeah. You breathe that in with yeah, your mouth open, you're, choking. you're tasting it for the rest of the day. <laughs> Definitely. It's like, oh. Yeah, it's not good. <laughs> So they ruin summer, and you know the only way of getting rid of them with fly spray, you know that ain't exactly an option because yeah, you got no flies, but now the room stinks of in diesel oil. Or That's something. true. So, yeah. So yeah, flies. Yeah, no, I'm with you there. Flies are annoying. I don't like flies at all. I mean, if I was sat in Nero one day and there were flies, oh, oh fuck's sake! Yeah. Be like Brooke, get them out. Sort it out, Brooke. Love. Go on, hit me with another one. Um, well, the only the the next thing I have is it's an advert that particularly I've got a couple of adverts, so I, I suppose I could bunch them up together. So annoying adverts. Well, there's two in particular that I cannot stand whatsoever, and they drive me absolutely fucking mad every time I see them come on. So the first one, I don't know if you've seen it, it's the Muller Rice advert with Nicole Scherzing or whatever her name is. I've seen a bit of it, yeah. Every single time she gets that fucking yoghurt on her fucking nose, <laughs> it gets on my nerves so much. I hate it. I really, really hate it. And she does that 
really annoying fucking laugh. Oh, I got yogurt on my nose. <laughs> yeah. Oh, fuck off. So that that annoys me a lot. And the other advert, right? <sighs> it's one for the Andrex toilet roll. And oh, you can't put a little Andrex dog in there. No, I like the dog. It's the children that get on my nerves. Oh, yeah. Right? More children. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, but the advert is... <clears throat> they ask the teacher, um, how clean do you feel after going to the toilet? Oh, yeah. And she goes, oh, I can't possibly answer that. <laughs> and so it says at the... Um, and, you know, in that little funny text at the bottom, so we asked some of her kids to help her out. <laughs> so the kids come in. I feel as clean as a baboon's ass or something you know it's just <laughs> <love that> <laughs> are you fucking serious it's so annoying no I, no, I mean I would love the advert if it said that yeah. <laughs> like a prostitute's tit <laughs> <laughs> I just I can't stand it and it, it, the things they come out with I clean I feel as clean as a as, like, as a sparkly unicorn or shit like that I'm like, one of them say like a fluffy rabbit or some shit oh like yeah that. how does what does it make sense? Mate, but... I've got a rabbit, and when that shits, it gets stuck to its arse like you would not believe. Oh, that's nasty. <laughs> so, yeah, those two ad- annoying adverts, particularly those two, I really fucking hate. Every single time they come on the fucking telly, I turn that fucker down or off. You know what? I'm going to be really generous on this one, and I'm going to say all annoying adverts. Oh, that's very generous of you. Because I remember quite a few years ago, mm. and you'll remember this. Calm down, dear. It's a commercial. <laughs> I hate that guy. That annoyed the fuck out. Yeah. Of me. And do you know what else annoyed me? What? Go compare. Oh, yeah. But that he, was... with him, he did annoy me. But I like that he's now owning his annoyance. So he's aware of how how annoying he is, and he just plays up to it. So yeah, I'll put in all annoying adverts. And you know what? I would like to add to it. As oh well. yes, please do. Adverts that have got fuck all to do with what they're selling. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, like a car advert that you don't car, actually always see. Car advert. Yeah, it is, isn't it? You don't... You'll have some woman walking down the street with her boobs out, right. walking around. She'll buy a newspaper. She'll buy a chocolate bar. She'll go to the pub. She'll have a night out. You know, she'll get so drunk she can't stand upright. <laughs> she'll go home. She'll go to sleep. You know, <laughs> she'll fall out of the bed. She'll laugh. She'll get yogurt on her nose the next morning. <laughs> and it'll say, Ford Mondeo, the best car you've ever driven. <laughs> It's got nothing to do with this yeah, advert whatsoever. That's very true. That is annoying. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I really want to see that advert. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I hate that. So, yeah. Okay. All them in. Cool, good. Glad. Very glad. So, my next... Well, my, I've got one that's a specific person. Okay. And then I've got sort of a type of celebrity. Right. So I'm going to go for you know the type of celebrity that really annoys me, but then that's going to open up a whole sh- sort of can of worms because then it's going to mean me going into the lists and shit like that. Mm. Um, but the main one that really annoys me, and it annoys me at least once a day, <laughs> um, is celebrities who are famous for nothing. Oh yeah, that that's annoying. Because you can't escape them because no. they're what makes up the media now. Yeah. Every time you look at the news or you turn on the telly or you go on a music channel, I mean, these people making music now, they're not making music. No. They're, they're having it written for them by like eight different people. Mm-hmm. For example, like Beyonce. Yeah. Yes, yeah, she can sing. And yes, yeah, she's really good. But, you know, the song Run the World Girls. Yeah. I mean, in that title, you know, you know the words of the song, that's it, because there are no other words. That took eight people to write. Yeah, that's bad. <laughs> and then Beyonce gets all the credit for something that's shite anyway. Yeah, you do make a fair point there. That is annoying. Then there's, uh, I mean, uh, I like Beyonce. Well, I don't like Beyonce, but I like, you know. You know, she can sing. I, I she can give can her that. Yeah. yeah. But what I don't like is that singing isn't enough nowadays. Mm. Bringing out a good album isn't enough. No, that's true. It's not the music that is famous anymore. It's the personality that's attached to it. Yeah. It's easy to forget that she started, like, you know, what, 15 years ago now? You know, in yeah. Destiny's Child, she did all that. Yeah. But her most recent album, mm. it's called Lemonade. It is, yeah. 
I downloaded it. Oh, I okay. gave it a listen because our last album, I can't remember what it's probably called now. Oh, it was called Beyonce. Um, <laughs> <laughs> good title. Um, it was really good. You know, she surprised everyone. She sort of dropped it, as they say, on iTunes. Yeah. She picked it back up again and then she put it on iTunes. And, you know, it was really good. It was a good album. There was a lot of really good songs on it. The album before that was called Four because it was her fourth album. And you can see a pattern here. Um, it was really good. There was a lot of songs on that that I really liked. Yeah. Her new album, there's no specific song on it apart from Formation, which is her most recent single. Apart from that, I can't hear any on there that I think, yeah, they're going to be singles. They're going to be really big. Mm. There's 12 songs on the album and only one of them, I think, warrants being a single maybe she surprised me and it will be really good yeah. but the album itself it's her worst it's oh. not good i don't i don't like it wow um, people are going crazy for this album but are they going crazy for the album like for example apart from formation do you know any of the titles on the album i didn't even know it was formation was until you said it I mean, yeah, I suppose with regards to this album, it's something about Becky or something, isn't it? Everyone's yeah, going. I mean, there's this whole thing attached to it that she's written this album because Jay Z cheated on her with some girl called Becky. Right. And a lot of the songs are based around that. And, you know, she specifically calls him out and says something about you being a cheater or whatever. Mm. So there's this whole bullshit thing that's going along with it. I don't like all that. No, I don't particularly like that. It's, it's in the same way that with this Suicide Squad, they've got Jared Leto saying that he was sending all these weird, stupid things. We don't care. Show me the product, and I'll judge you based on that product. Yeah. Don't add all the other stuff to it. No, that's true. She's more than able to bring out a brilliant album, like she did with her last one. There was no promotion. Mm. There was nothing. It was just, oh, by the way, my new album's on iTunes. Go get it. And that was it. And yeah. I love that. That was brilliant. Beyonce is capable of that so why she felt the need to add all this crap on top of it I don't know mm. I mean, she's not someone who's famous for nothing she doesn't fit on that list no. but she's she's becoming one of them and I don't like it mm, that's interesting but I've got quite a list of people who are famous for nothing okay go on then um Cheryl Fernandez Fasini Cole <laughs> Payne because she's <laughs> Well, I think she's still with the bloke from One Direction. Mm -hmm. She used to be in Girls Aloud. Yeah. Um, I used to quite like Girls Aloud. Um, <laughs> she did. And then she did what quite a lot of people do, the career flop. So she decided to sit there and judge other people when yep. she really needs to sort of judge herself. Ooh. She's, she's crap. She can't sing. Okay. She can't dance. Yep. She doesn't write her own music. Right. Why is she sat there judging other people? I can't stand... Well, I hate these, these shows anyway. And I hate it when they have someone... Uh, as much as Louis Walsh annoys me, he has credit with regards to the music industry. Ah, as, but see, he's on my list. Ah, okay. Do you know who he's responsible for? Uh, uh, Jedward. Um, right. Well, <laughs> I, I know, I know. But he... he like well he did he Westlife he did them didn't he he did Westlife as a joint venture with Simon Cowell they actually belong to Simon Cowell's record label really I don't know that the same as Boyzone oh Boyzone I forgot about them and he wouldn't have had Jedward if he hadn't have been sat behind the panel to begin with no that's true but I'm just saying he has more credit being there I mean, whether it's just his age alone, he's been in the business a lot longer than these people yeah, that have started, especially someone like Cheryl Cole, who started off in the industry. I mean, yes, you could argue she understands what they're going through and all that sort of shit, but I don't know, to judge them on their... She started from pop stars, didn't she? Oh, I don't know. I'll take your word for it. Oh, pop stars I mean... and the rivals, was it? Yeah, when it was you had the boy band and the girl band. Oh, and then it was just... right, I see. I think it was the girls, wasn't it? They were sound of the underground, wasn't it? Oh, that's but, right, yeah. Yeah, I mean, Cheryl Cole definitely can't stand up. I mean, I, I haven't got anything specifically against Nicole Yogurt No Scherzinger <laughs> because, I mean, she was on the panel as well yeah. for quite a while. Um, but I sort of prefer her because at least, you know, she wasn't created in one of these programmes. You know, she started in a girl band. They were pretty successful, not for very long, no. but they were pretty successful. And then she did a solo career, which, you know, although it flopped, I really liked her first solo album. It was really good. All right. Um, she hasn't really got, you know, someone like um, Gary Barlow, 
definitely he should be sat on the yeah. panel it's the most you know he's the best one they've ever had barring Simon Cowell because mm. he knows what he's talking yeah, about yeah that's true he writes all the takes that all the, all the take that's music he's got a good voice he knows what he's doing mm -hmm. but when you've got Nick Grimshaw yeah Rita Ora she was on it wasn't she Rita Ora, I mean oh Rita Ora she, she goes to the top of the list <laughs> she's famous for nothing she had one album mm. and one crappy single I don't you know, even like particularly what? know her music to be honest I don't think she has music she just had that one song didn't she that R.I.P. song about four or five years ago now oh. and it was crap <laughs> well no we have to people must have liked it for her to carry on but then she's done nothing since I mean you've got to carry on the legacy oh, you know you can't true, yeah. just go through your whole career in one song do you want me to go through another couple on my list oh go on then yeah and just sort of say if we you know if you agree that they're famous for nothing alright I'm going to start with a strong one. Katie Hopkins. Katie Hopkins. She's the uh, outspoken, annoying woman, isn't she? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, she's annoying. What does she do? I mean... How does she come to attention in the world? Uh, weren't she on The Apprentice? Oh, is that where she's from? Yeah, I think oh. she came second, and then she said that she was going to sue him and all stuff like that. Oh, and then when she got a bit of the old attention... Mm. She decided that as soon as something would go on in the news, she would have her say, and she'd say something bad, you That's know? Not, yeah. For example, I mean, she said something that I did kind of agree with, but it was the only one thing that she said that I agreed with. And just because, you know, people have this platform on Twitter or whatever, yeah. and, you know, use it for good. Don't just put your opinion out there. No, you know, it's not just a place for you to voice your opinion, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Just because you can doesn't mean you should, no. you know? And, you know, when Kelly Clarkson was on American Idol or something, mm. yeah, she's put on a lot of weight. She's had two kids. She's pregnant again. She's put on a lot of weight. Mm. And uh, she tweeted saying, you know, you can't call it baby weight because you had the baby ages ago. You're just fat. Yeah, it's not need to be a douche. <laughs> There's no need to say anything about it. No, you know? exactly. Just because you can and reach, you know, a vast audience, shut up. Yeah. No one cares what you've got to say. But the thing that annoys me more is the fact that people keep giving her a platform. Yeah, of course. I mean, will. although it's been cancelled now, she, you know, she was giving her own TV show. They put her in Big Brother. Yeah. You're just feeding, you know, yeah. this horrible woman. Yeah. You know, if you don't give her that attention, she will eventually just curl up and die in a corner <laughs> somewhere, and then we will be better for it. Oh, she is very annoying. Really annoying. Yeah. No, I'm going to zoom through this list because it's quite long. Okay. Um, anyone from the Kardashian slash Jenner clan? Yeah. Mm. All right, Miley Cyrus. Yeah, she's annoying. <laughs> yeah, Nicki Minaj. Uh, yeah, she's annoying. Katie Paris. Yep, definitely. Uh, anyone from Geordie Shaw or The Only Way is Essex yep. this isn't uh, Russell Brand uh, yeah he's quite annoying as well actually yeah um, Johnny Vegas yes don't like him don't like his comedy Keith, Keith Lemon oh yeah he's annoying uh, Chris Moyles yeah he gets on my nerves uh, Lindsay Lohan uh, I miss her in Parent Trap <laughs> right <laughs> Anyway, um, another one is Jason Manford. Jason Manford's the comedian, right? Yeah. Oh, I like him, though. Mm. Mm. And two people yeah. that started doing good music, okay. but I think they just let everything else get in the way. Okay. Is Lady Gaga. Gaga, yep. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> and... And Taylor Swift. Oh, interesting. Okay. Like, starting with Taylor Swift, mm -hmm. way back she did country music. I loved it. It was really good. You know, that whole Romeo, Romeo love story song. Really good. And I even liked all her stuff up until her sort of second to last album, the red one, where she did um, I Knew You Were Trouble When You Walked In. And, oh. you know, there were some really nice songs on that album. Yeah. Her new album, yeah, it's a fun pop album, but it's nothing that she originally started doing. Mm. And everyone just says, oh, she's really versatile. And yeah, maybe she is, but you know what? It could also be looked at that she sold out. 
Yeah, okay, it's true. It's and everyone's putting her up on this pedestal saying, oh, she's an icon, she's someone, you know, for us people to look at. Or you could say that, you know, she essentially sold herself to the highest bidder and thought, well, actually, the money's in this area at the moment. Mm. This is what everyone's listening to, so this is what I'm going to do. You know, her old country music, and that she released a song last year that feet Kendrick Lamar. Yeah, that's... And in the... Vi- you know, the music video was, you know, for Bad Blood, it was, look how many famous friends I've got. Yeah, I saw that. It was very bad, wasn't it? There was just, like, there was so many, like, oh, name drop, oh, name drop. Exactly. I mean, and it was just, oh, in case you don't know who it is, we'll put the name on the screen as well. Yeah. Like, it was just a bit much, and it sort of just got too much for me in the end, because Meredith Grey from Grey's Anatomy was in it, and I just thought, what the fuck is this? Yeah. But I can understand Ellie Goulding and you know whatever, but her really? Mm. I mean, she's like fourteen years old. <laughs> but it was just oh, it's a name, so we'll shuck her in the video. Yeah. And you know, it's her last tour to essentially promote this album. You know, it's not really apart from sort of maybe blank space and shake it off. Apart from those. I mean, she's released about another four or five songs from that album since, mm. and none of them have really sort of made it in any respect. Yet, she gets so much media attention because oh, last night Justin Timberlake was at a concert and they did a song together. Uh. Oh, last night so and so was at a concert and they did a song together. Oh, Taylor Swift's invited a load of her fans back to her house to listen to the album. Oh, Taylor Swift's given a load of money to charity. <laughs> wow, well, what does that say about us? As the, so we're getting annoyed by people. <laughs> oh, look at her giving money to charity. You know. Lady Gaga, I mean, Ooh, her old uh, stuff. Sorry. The, okay. The, the Born This Way album, brilliant. I loved it. It was really, really good. Yeah. Art Pop, I mean, they call it Art Flop. It was a flop. You know, the album wasn't great. There was nothing on there that really stood out and thought, yeah, this is incredible. You know, yeah. it was a crap album. Everyone saw that, even the people that really liked her. And, you know, I think she lost a part of the following. Um, since then, it's, oh, I'm doing an album with Tony Bennett, mm. which, fair enough, it's a different direction for a little while. Yeah. We'll go along with that. Oh, now I'm going to release another perfume. Yeah. Now I'm going to go and be in American Horror Story. Yeah. She was good and, in that, though. <laughs> God. <laughs> and now I'm going to release um, a clothing line with Elton John. Really? It's just becoming... Oh, and now um, I'm the grandparent to Elton John's child. It's just all these weird little things, and it's like, stop with all, you know, trying to get us to like you again. Get back in the studio, make an album, and put that in front of us. Because, you know, the music isn't selling the music anymore. Yeah, I know what you mean. 